Yeah, Rue, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I think we, there's a lot of problems, a lot of issues that we should be concerned with. Um, this is sort of a, a short things that we sh should be caring about. Um, you know, overfishing is certainly a, the obvious one here. Fishing impacts to the uh, the habitats are, are very concerning. Uh, also, things like uh, species, um, our interactions with the oceans, and then also um, the sort of larger scale uh, issues like climate change, um, acidification, sedimentation, pollution. These are all very um, issues. And talking specifically about overfishing, um, uh, you know, a laundry list of remedies that are used in fisheries management. All types of fisheries, uh, you know, here included. Uh, for example, there are uh, things called total allow the, the, the maximum amount that you can catch. For our bottom fish, we have a annual catch limit. It's around 100,000 pounds. I think this is current. Yeah, so this is very current. So as of, you know, last week, percent of that, uh, that allowable, that total allowable catch. Um, we have things like licenses. You know, if you sell your catch, you need a, a commercial marine license, an aquaria permit. Gear restrictions for, um, for example, like uh, Akule. Uh, the nets that you use need to be a certain mesh. Keep the, um, uh, so that you, you know, save the small fish, that you only catch the big one. Along with those gear restrictions are different types of size restrictions. Uh, so, for example, for like a peel, you know, there's a 10 inch uh, minimum size limit and, you know, 16 size for, for sale. Some fisheries have bag limits. So, like for this one, there's a, a bag limit of 20 fish per, you know, trip. Uh, this is an, another example uh, where for some Uhu uh, in Maui, you have a minimum size, but you also have a bag limit as well. Closures. Like for Moi, for example, uh, the seasons close from June and August to, uh, to 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 stop fishing when they're when they're spawning, um, and then the last of these at the bottom here, closures, and, and these are the things that I uh, part of my work focuses on, is spatial. Now the idea of spatial closures and and, and why they may be effective is uh, contingent on this idea of spillover. Now imagine this for our ocean, or what have you, and um, you have fishing occurring, and it's reducing the population to some size that we feel is, is, is concerning. Take, say, half of the reef, or the area, or what have you, and close it off to fishing. So that blue side on the right, keep open. Time uh, on the right is not being fished, so their numbers increase a little bit. And then maybe at some point that side gets a little bit too crowded. Move to the other side, and that movement will spill over. So at the same time, that population is spawning, and maybe some of their larvae. Uh, so this is another spillover. Let's see. So when we uh, when we design reserves, this is sort of for fisheries management, rebuilding stocks. This is our idea that we can conserve a part of the population, the open area level of of. of okay. There are different types of reserves that we have. Oh, oh yeah, if I'm whatever. Um, so go ahead. So the question was um, to move uh, the areas that uh, you close off. That sort of, um, that was the question. So uh, most of the times they're uh, set in a certain place. Um, they can 
or sometimes yearly. So the was it the Diamond Head uh, Marine Life Conservation District on period every all year. There isn't year or not. So um, so it's it's every other year. So yeah. Um, okay, so there are different types of reserves uh, that are used away. Uh, perhaps the, the most famous, um, oh, I don't have it here. You guys know the uh, the Northwest Monument, Papanahanaumokuakea. Uh, it's the largest uh, monument uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, and that's, it's very strict, you know, only a certain... Uh, amount of activities can go on there. Certainly, no commercial fishing can can occur there. Like sanctuaries, so you may be familiar with the um, uh, sanctuary. Is it here? Yeah. So it's 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 around Oahu, um, but also around Maui Nui, and those are areas where certain activities that are related to um, whales are are restricted or managed. It's like marine life conservation districts. So these are from the state. Um, Anama Bay is an example of one of those. There are, I think, maybe 19 of those around the state. And they're, um, if, in what's allowed to, in terms of the activities that, that can occur. Some uh, you can't fish, some you can only fish for certain species. Places you can only do certain activities and, and et cetera. Are sort of species or fisheries related reserves. So you have fishery replenishment areas on the side of a whole island uh, for the aquaria trade, fishery specific reserves, all of which, and I'll get to those uh, later. Let's see. So, manager, and uh, you're tasked with the uh, opportunity uh, to create a reserve. There are a few whole bunch of goals that you may want to address. Hmm. Now, obviously, you want to uh, you want to conserve, want to build, you want to uh, uh, protect. You want to protect biodiversity. That may be one of the goals that you, you want to um, reserve. Uh, maybe you want to protect the habitat that your fish use. Uh, or the little, um, uh, nursery areas that may be important to protect. Uh, you may want to protect spawning aggregations. Um, but there are also um, other type of goals that aren't uh, biological. Uh, you may want to uh, make sure that uh, uh, your area can continue their livelihoods in terms of making money, employment, or food security. Um, yeah, um, it's a part of a culture here. And so it's a very um, uh, part of our life. The political side, you design your reserve, it's sort of in a transparent fashion. You want to uh, have a lot of diverse stakeholders questions um, of how we design your reserves. Make sure that uh, your uh, your reserve is enforceable. Capabilities to enforce your reserve, or what's the point of having a reserve if you aren't able to enforce it? Um, and lastly, you want to uh, make sure there's a way to evaluate if your reserve is working or not. It's very, very complex. A lot of strings are pulling manager, and it's 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 a uh, difficult decision to make ma uh, manually. Balance fisheries goals when designing our marine reserves, and of um, I like to study. Now, often goals are in conflict. You know, for example, if you want to protect the coral reef, uh, you also have to think of access. Or maybe if you are a um, uh, the captain of a boat, uh, sort of general maximize employment of your crew, 
we're maximizing profit. This is an example from our um, and sort fish fisheries, uh, so the, the pelagic fisheries here. Trade off of tree and turtle bycatch, and this is a very sort of a simple example here. So, something that we want to minimize, something we want to maximize. Turtle bycatch is on your x axis and your y axis up and down. Odds are feasible combinations of both of those goals. The bottom, I use my mouse here actually. So at this point here, you have zero trail bite, but the cause you have zero profit for your fishery. So that's sort of one, uh, one end of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is this, let me see. where you have the maximum amount of profit, so it's around, what, 12 million. But the cost of having that level of profit is a lot of turtle bycatch, around, what is it? Around 800 turtles, okay? So, uh, you know, you can imagine with increasing profits um, that this relationship is, is sort of positive, that, you know, the more profit, the more turtle interactions and the more turtle um, ideally, zero turtle bycatch of profit, right? and that would be sort of the point here where the blue that blue dot is. Both are in conflict. This ideal point is impossible. The idea is where do you want to place yourself? These combinations of profit turtle bycatch to you or that you are, you are comfortable with and this trade-off curve is the way that we try to look at those objectives or those goals within a, a marine reserve there are i can think of uh, at least four different types of goals that we want so number one we want to maximize of our species of nursery areas, spawning eggs, what, what have you. We want to do it in the most uh, efficient way of possible. So we want to try to minimize the reserve area. We can't close the entire state waters for fishing. We have to be very uh, economical with how we create fishing. So we want to minimize the reserve area maximize the compactness. This is what I call reserve aggregation. Reserves to be really compact and that they're easy to comply. You want to minimize your impact to your fishers. These are the people who are really affected by your reserve. And ideally, we'd like to have a system where we can protect our species but also provide the least amount of impact to our fishers. Because all, all these four um, goals are in conflict with each other. Configure or the right combination of these goals that addresses each objective properly. So how do we do that? Uh, how do we quantify that? Or how do we do that in, in, in a way um, that is that, uh, uh, scientific and that is transparent and working on? Okay, so the set of slides that I'll be showing you next is exactly that. So I will be showing you different configurations of reserve that optimize objectives. I will be using the bottom fish fishery as an example, because that's the fishery that I work in. So to orient you where we are, um, you know, there's the open, open magic fisheries or sword fishes. These are mahi, wahoo, opa, uh, marlin, what have you. It's, it's a lot of species, a lot of big species uh, that are caught uh, far away and, uh, and, and um, line. Then you have, let's see, 
the other side of the spec are coral reef fisheries. So these species, lots of gears used, or um, deepest around you know 30 to 50 meters. By bottom fish fishery. So these are our coastal fish, 50 to 400 meters, often around banks and slopes and, and other types of of, of deep, deeper type features. Um, these seven species comprise uh, the Hawaiian deep seven bottom fishes. Federally and state managed species complex. Spe uh, uh, six snapper species here. So that's um, the six, oh, let's see, six on this side. So you have Onaga, Opakapaka, Ehu, Gindai, Kale Kale, and Lehi. And then you have this oddball uh, grouper, uh, Hapu'upu'u, uh, a native species, uh, only found here. And like uh, the second slide I showed you, there's a lot of regulation for this. Here. There's that showed you in that uh, second slide or something. Um, you need that commercial marine license to sell your product limit. So if you want to sell Naga, be at least one pound. Catch them on hand uh, on hand lines. You can't use traps or nets or that. Um, no bag limit of five bottom fish per trip, and there are bottom fish restricted fishing areas of them later. Um, but because uh, we have for this fishery, there are 12 of them, and then as you can see, there are two around Oahu. Bertha D is right off at a point, and Bertha E is um, the, the Makapu'u Bertha. These current Bertha's, along with that first uh, bowl of analysis, we can also compare these placements to the current Bertha's to ask of the current purpose, you know, how, how well are we doing? Okay. And as a disclaimer, I want to um, just like to say that I'm not proposing um, new positions for these burfas. Um The state is currently getting some back from the council to actually remove some of the burfas. So um, this is relevant to fisheries. I don't see this particularly being um, rich fishery. This, it's another reason why I chose the bottom fish fisheries because um, we can look at it as a, as a nice example. Okay. What is BRFAs? It is bottom fish restricted fishing areas. So when I, I think I, put, I think Berkeley is going to be in my talk for a lot, uh, for a lot of the slides here. So let me um, restate that when I say Berkeley's, I'm referring to these spatial closures. Okay. Um, okay. So the way that we uh, this is the fun part. At least to me, it's the fun part. The way that um, I go about. Uh, finding these different configurations, as I, as I think of it as a game. Okay, uh, let's just look at Oahu Island, um, and let's look at the range where bottom fish live. So around 50 to 400 meters. Uh, all of that orange space is the area between 50 and 400 meters. Now you put a um, on top of this. 500 by 500 meter cells. Uh, so for for every space, so we have 5,000 of these cells. You can't really see like the outlines, but you can kind of see that they kind of look like little cells that are all put together. The aim is you can turn on whatever combination of cells. Okay, that's that's the idea of the game. So we have 5,000 of these cells. Now the current is D and that E, 100 cells. Yeah. So the current restricted spatial closures are in the black outlines. 
many cells are in those burfas. So it's around 15% of the area. So that's, that's the, the coverage for the... So in our game, burfas, we want that 700, that 15%, to be our maximum area for comparison. So it's just a play with, okay? Of the game. The second part of the game is customize our species. This is a uh, distribution map for bottom fishes. The darker the blue, the the bottom fish. So these areas you can see different hot spots for for bottom fishes. Uh, do I also put the burfas here? Okay, I also put the burfas in there so you can see that the burfas, those hot spots for, for bottom fish occurrence. Okay, now each cell, each of those 5,000 cells has a species score. Score, uh, the more probable fish there. Okay. The current, uh, all the cells in the current birth rate, it's around 14, 15% of the total species score. When we create our birth rate, or when we create our reserves, we want to be just as good as the birth rate. So that 14% is our minimum. We want to be make sure 15% of our species. The next, yeah, go ahead. How do you know? So created um, using, uh, so I used, uh, there are uh, video drop cameras on the islands. Those surveys of bottom fish absence of presence with, um, uh, of bulls. And from that model, I extrapolated to the entire space here. From, from different types of habitat-based species distribution models. What's the reason off the Makapu has a large area does not appear to be a heavy bottom fish habitat? What's the big wide area for the upper right part of the Makapu? Why do you include that? It doesn't appear to have bottom fish. Like okay, so that 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 white yeah, um, like the this area here this area is outside that 400 range he sells here uh to to play with in there so when i count I'm, I'm only really counting all the cells that are all of these cells here yeah so I don't, I don't include this space here um for a lot of the um burfas, uh Areas that are outside the range for the bottom fishes, but that's how you know when they create happens to be. Okay. Third objective: our reserves to be compact. Uh, the way that I calculate aggregation is uh, the number of cell-to-cell -cell interactions. Okay. So, as an example, let's just say. To be in the reserve. Let's look at this configuration of our four cells. In this configuration, there are no shared boundaries. They're not touching. Yeah. So the amount of shared boundaries is zero. We put those four cells in line. In which case, the number of shared boundaries is one, one, two, or aggregated force. Now, not the most compact it could be. Of course, the most compact it would be these four corners here, where you have one, two, three, four shared boundaries. So we want to make sure that many shared boundaries as possible when you're doling out, you know, which which set you want to close. So in our example, as a recap, so number one. We want to minimize fissure impact, and this is equivalent. Think about um, if you're a fissure, the more area that is allocated to the fissure, the less space you have to fish. I'm measuring fissure impact in this very same as total area. So the current spatial closures 
around 15% of the total area, which is around 700 cells. So the maximum amount, uh, number of cells I can use is 700, but I want to minimize that number as, as much as possible. Number two, I want to maximize my species' best bang for my buck. Okay? I want to cover all of those hot spots in that species distribution map. And I want to make sure that it's comparable to the Burfos. I count up all of those scores in my reserve that they should be at least 14% of the total. I want to maximize reserve aggregation. I want to make sure they're as compact as possible. I'm around. Let's look at those results here. Um, hmm. and before I continue, when I say game, I really mean um, math. It's it's um, I use I use a lot of, of of math and modeling to fit where the reserves are, but I say game just to make fun of myself. Um, but yeah, so th this, is, this isn't just me um, putting things together. These are optimized in some sort of a, a program. Get this example first. So on your X, you have love species protection. Burfas, uh, uh, that burfa minimum is around 14%. That is this vertical dotted line here. Y axis, you have reserve area. The maximum area is around, again, around 14, 15%. That's what this vertical dotted line is. And feasible combinations of species protection and reserve area. So this is similar to our turtle example. Okay. So let's first look at this, hold on. this point here. Oh. These aren't all the points. Uh, there are more points here, but I just chose the points with the lotion. Okay, um, let's look at that solution right there. This solution here. You program to reserve. Now notice how sparse we set the lag very low, so we should expect a very uh, never go reserves. We look at now solution with the highest species protection. The round point. This is what it looks like. So it looks similar, but just more cells thrown into the reserve. Yeah. Increase species protection. We have to increase that we use. This is the first trade-off analysis. That with increasing species protection, you need to increase the reserve uh, to some kind of correct. Now, let's look at a um, set of solutions with aggregation points here. Okay, so notice that now shifted a little bit upwards. The solution with the lowest species protection. So, to so this point is around 0.5. It's still higher than the burfos. Look how compact. So now we say, of all the solutions with the highest aggregations, as um, solution is sort of what comes up with that. Okay, and I think I also have the highest. So uh, a little bit different configuration, but still compact in sort of. Um, it, you can still see, you know, these sort of very distinct cluster chosen. Okay. Notice that the difference between the high aggregation and the low aggregation points. Consider this. So consider this level of species protection here. Low aggregation and high aggregation is that you need more area, same level of species aggregation. And this makes sense because if you are aggregation trying to have your, your cells touch together, you can just dole out the cells, the areas where they have all the hot spots. So you can have a pretty sparse network. But if you're constrained and you need to have 
compact reserve. You need to have all those cells, you know, match up together and, and line up. Then you're going to include areas that are hot spots for bottom fish, but you will also include the areas that aren't. Thing and maybe a bad thing, but it it, uh, it does have its 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 use is more feasible in terms of management. If you're a fisher, this type of um, reserve is a little bit easier to follow, easier to comply than something that looks like, like this. We can all agree. That. And and that. Oh, caps here. So with higher uh, species protection, you need more area. With higher aggregation, compactness, more area needs to be conserved for species protection. Also note that with higher aggregations, species protection is compromised because of reach and area limit. Now, it's not evident here, but if we look at the solutions with the highest Notice that, again, those points are all pushed up. All the species protection you get is around 0.19, as high as 0.243 you know, here. And the reason is to increase species protection for this level of aggregation. We need to be in... And this area is... Um, uh, we, we've broken our rules because than the burfas, you can increase your species protection at this level, is to increase that ceiling, that, that trade-off with aggregation, is that the, uh, the level of species protection is compromised because you reach that yield. Okay. Huh. So, this is a sort of, uh, let's see. Uh, I suppose I can skip this. It's more of a summary uh, step. So, uh, the next step is analysis. Into the idea of the figures. Now, made for the simple analysis, was that related to area? Each of our cells has the same impact, but that may not be the case. There are some areas that are more valuable as a fishing area than other area. So some areas are more valuable than others. We can think of different types of impacts to fishers. And one is that it could be catch, uh, but the one that I tried to uh, incorporate was revenue distribution. This map is a um, distribution of revenue for for all of the bottom fish, 1990 and 1995, bottom fishers report their catch to the state. They have to uh, say which grid they caught from. There are these sort of inshore grids and there's these sort of larger out, outside grids. The more revenue comes out of that area. Kind of point. Uh, this is where your kind of point burfa is, and these are where your makapu, uh, the makapu burfa is. From uh, this map, that the idea of impact now becomes a little bit more complicated, because now you have differing levels of use. It's a little bit more interesting, at least to me. We include revenue. This is something that we want to try to minimize and we keep area as a goal now from we went from having three goals to four goals a little bit more complex um but the summary from that what's going on with this let's see uh let me get rid of this when we include um Bottom fish revenue as a as our source of impact are these configurations. Now, focus more on uh, this particular. It's, it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, this area, uh, sort of uh, windward, so 
this unknown error here was chosen at the distribution of the revenue and then also our species distribution maps we can see why the uh, game or the program chose if we're trying to reduce our impact minimize that revenue impact we don't want to be choosing areas here it's too high same thing uh, here in, in, in Makuru. There are other uh, South Shore and, and some areas to uh, on the windward side are less impactful to fishers and maybe better candidates for reserves in terms of impact. And these reserves, oh, oh, sorry, then within these places, you can look at where the map of, of our species distributions, you can see where the different hotspots are. So in the South, uh, you have this area here, and you have um, so the, the the leeward side of Oahu has places of of bonafish hotspots, and then on the windward side there seems to be a lot of hotspots here. So see that these areas are the best combination, act, but you can still conserve your species, and so that's that's the punchline there is to, to two different um, conflicting, uh, but they don't have to be conflicting goals. Okay. Okay. So the uh, the point of to define and quantify our, of our reserve when we're designing our reserve network, and then two to understand the trade-offs of our goals when we design our reserves. The good thing about this type of method is that it's very flexible. What I've shown you was a very simple example. It's, it's one fishery. One is uh, the impacts to fishing. Yeah, it can be uh, multiple, be multiple types of ocean. Be different types of fishing could be used as, um, could be incorporated into something like this. You could also incorporate things like recreational use, uh, types of uses, um, as well as how many species you want to incorporate. Concept to scale up to more complex issues, and actually for nearshore resources, so not not um, not not bonafish, but more coral reef areas. It's a little bit more complex because a lot of people use it for different, and so because of that, you have different sort of zonations when you talk about your your planning. So yeah, so it can be it can be scaled to more complex in marine spatial planning. That is the last slide for me. Um, I'd like to thank the Hawaii Sea Grant Honolulu Bay uh, Education Program, Mahalani, for inviting me. More importantly, I want to thank you all for coming, spending Thursday evening to, 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 to listen to me talk about some of my work. This is actually the um, thing that I'm speaking about this particular work to the public. Uh, so you may have noticed that, you may have not noticed that. Um, so I'd like to thank you for that opportunity because it helps it helps me um, uh, better synthesize what I do. And, uh, so yeah, um, that's it. Do you have any questions or, yeah, go ahead. What is the first thing you had, acidification, what is that? Okay, so, um, Ocean acidification, so you have um, increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from, from fossil, fuel, fossil fuel emissions, right? Dioxide gets uh, dissolved into the, into the seawater. And that resulting process, each of the, of the ocean, um, and colloquially, because when you decrease the uh, pH, it's more acidic. And that has um, a lot of um, implications for uh, organisms that build shells, or or a fish eat, and so it has it can have a lot of um, very broad uh, impacts. So that's what I mean by acidification. Yes. Of, ag of aggregation? 
Uh, when I mean aggregation, I mean the um, how com. So I, when I just mean aggregation, I mean how compact your reserve is. Uh, but maybe you're thinking about. Were you asking about revenue? You're talking about the, the aggregation of your sales. Yeah. How are you determining Is that your fish? Oh uh, no, so they're they're very so they're they're different concepts. Yeah. So when I when I mean aggregation, I literally like, you know, this cell matches up with this cell, and that's sort of how I, I, I measure that. It doesn't have to do anything about the fish. It has more to do about the design of reserve. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So the question was, how uh, for the distribution models yeah. for the survey? Okay. So if you look at uh, this, uh, the video cameras were a project to evaluate the effectiveness of the burfas. So that was the, so the video drops, uh, the effectiveness of the current spatial reserves. So that the priority was to survey within the burfas and outside of the burfas. So that means uh, most of the sampling was on the eastern tip of Oahu, all across the, uh, the leeward side up kind of point, um, I don't think there was a whole lot of uh, south shore, so there are some data gaps, certainly. Yeah. Stay for Oahu, uh, the, there's pretty good coverage in terms of, the, of those videos. Sure. What percentage of those numbers from your survey? Well, that, that one I don't know because. Samples the, the, samples. There are cells that you know. First, the the survey was. There are probably a lot of cells that did not have um, an observation. So what we usually do is we try to create a decent model, and then for that we don't have information. Abundance or the species presence or occurrence. So that's sort of how the that's how we interpolate um, and, and fill in all those blanks. Certainty in in the areas. Yeah. 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 So there there will always be uncertainty when you interpolate or when you you know create these maps. And uh, yeah, Ralph. Looks to me as though. The area is wishing profit, if I understand it right. Most partly, it's going to be fish there, or they mm -hmm. wouldn't go there. But secondly, maybe that's where they don't use too much fuel. It's calm water on the leeward coast. Yeah. So, examples who can stand in this case, put the sanctuaries where the fishermen are not as anxious to go. Anyway, the fishery can still be covered. Does that seem like that? That that could be one. Um, yeah, because certainly there are areas that may have good habitat, but are less accessible because it's maybe too windy for most of the year. So bottom fish, bottom fishers usually go there once or twice a year. So yeah, so the area. Is, so the idea is place these reserves in these sort of in, in those areas where there's a lot of habitat but it's just low accessibility. That is um, I guess when you're trying to evaluate your reserve, it, it could be a little bit harder to, to, to do your monitoring, you know. You think with those distances you still expect spillover to be part of the benefit? Uh, so that would require some information on movement. 
and uh, my colleague Steve Scherer is working on how, uh, how, uh, how often fish move in and out of the burfas. Because um, we, I don't know, we, we tend to think of them as relatively the same place, but that's not usually the case. Um, and so um, I'd, I'd like to think that these sizes are large enough so that fish can move in and out, and, or can stay in, in, your, in the reserve, but also leave the, the, the reserve to be available for the fishery. That's sort of the, the, theor the theory behind that. Yeah. Go ahead. Here and there, there are spots outside the main areas that look to sanctuaries as a practical matter. You probably would not include those little areas and sanctuaries. What is an example? Oh, you mean like, uh, like, uh, like, like yeah, this, like this blip over here? Yeah, yeah. So, um, optimizer shot out, but on a practical sense, you'd have to choose whether tiny area is worth it. And it doesn't seem like that would be. Um, so these are kind of so. So what comes out of these? Um, the others are suggestion, um, like proposals. They're they're supposed to help managers test areas. They're, they're not going to get it spot on. You know, it's it's it's. What comes afterwards in the discussion with stakeholders, you know, are these areas good? Are they bad? Should we use them? Should we chuck them? You know, stuff, stuff like that. So, yeah. Comment. Okay. Data collection technology is work better. It's just hoping you can get more real data back to it's not her. I work with it. Yes. Less, less is point, right? I mean, because the, the models seem perfect. So really what you want to be able to do is get more data to just flush it out better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, certainly, uh, especially those areas where you have gaps, uh, certain, yes. A lot of your catch data is donated by fishermen. That was used, so uh, when fishers sell their catch, they have to man uh, on a mandatory basis. They have to report that catch. So it's it's not voluntary. It's 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 part of the law. How much they um, at least uh, how much they caught, what species they caught, and they made off of that, and where they caught it was it, are, are all types of information that they have to provide uh, when they sell their catch. Are all your fish in Honest with that? Really nice place to fish. Open up these claims in another place. Where is fish? Where's the append? You find uh, the pointing is honest. Okay, so the question was on data quality and certainly for the, uh, the early. They have to tell them, but where they're fishing is something. Uh, yeah, so so the idea is that the the fishing grids are so large that it's large enough so that they can still conceal their fishing grounds, their fi their fishing spots. Have you ever met a fisherman? Have I ever met a fisherman? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, that so that and reported catch. Right. There's all of issues with data quality. It's really part of the data set. Talking to folks from the state, they certainly know about the idea of maybe underreporting or misreporting. I like to say it's better now. They have a, a better handle at it, certainly. Pelagic fish. That's a, yeah, that's the, oh, well, pelagic for the pelagic fisheries for our longliners, um, observers on board. Yeah, it's the uh, for I think swordfish it's hundred percent, and then the tuna fisheries it's a, a lower percentage. But the, the observers are supposed to be there. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a small. You mean it's a small fishery, sort of. Just asking for an opinion, I guess. 
fishing and appreciate that you're trying to save their fishery and want to cooperate? Most of the fisheries, uh, most of the fishers uh, were supposed to be removed uh, for various reasons. So when I talk to fishers about it, their reactions is mostly the reactions are mostly about one of the other burfas, whereas I'm mostly talking about the design of burfas. So they're kind of different. And the challenge for me is is to try to is 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 in trying to um, get that across the fishers. I would like to think that would agree to such uh, the idea of marine research with their with their interactions with the state and with um, you know things like that that uh, it kind of muddies their opinion about the effectiveness of. Of, of reserves and things like that. Also, yeah. they want at least for this fishery, a lot of the the perhaps the consensus from from fishers is that tack the total allowable catch. They feel that the allowable catch is enough of regulation in their fishery. You cap how much we can take out. That should be good enough. They're, they're unnecessary because of that. So, report that um, there's enforcement going on with the burfas. And you can tell us it's far, hundreds of miles away from the nearest port. So, you can understand that um, enforceability and compliance is also an issue. And as I said before, the point of a reserve if uh, you can't enforce it. And so, that's uh, you know, a big why they don't see the birth as effective is because of the amount of of, of poaching that at least they, they report is occurring. This slide showed the allowable limit yeah, mm -hmm. which fishery it was. Well, it fishery, yeah. showed the amount of taking part of it. Yeah. Just poaching uh, there were a couple of years where the, the tack was reached. Uh, I can't remember the years off the top of my head, maybe, uh, but two or three years. Um, but since uh, this, and then since the tack, fishers participating in the fishery have gone down. This is because they uh, feel that certain management measures away from the fishery. So you have less effort. Years. Uh, the tack is not reached. It's maybe eighty percent of the tack is reached. So um, that seems to be the the, the current uh, pattern. So if they're saying that, like caps good enough, it's going They're essentially asking for free rain because they're not reaching the caps anyway. Is that true? I suppose. Okay. Uh, it would look like curves if, uh, in the issue of fishery. Parrotfish in the first hundred meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't reverse. Um off the top of, uh I, I don't know. I don't know. When you include the near shore you have to you know which fisheries you want to protect um and they'll live in different areas i suppose some of the trade-offs may be similar in terms of like species protection and area and aggregation and, and the amount of species that you can protect but well, maybe no, in the almost no compliance no do yeah 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 so, that's a key of your design is how are we, are we going to have enough manpower to or how, how are we going to make sure that people comply with this the analysis right you can't really I, I'm not how you would put that into here unless you include maybe something about distance from port 